Right, today I'm going to demonstrate dipping lustres. Uh, this technique can be used for a number of things. You could use it um, as a background for a subject. You could just dip a tile and then do pen work on the top. Black pen work. Or you could do a gold design with gold underlay. Or you could do objects itself and leave it as it is or again do pen work or gold underlay over that. But before you start, what you need to do is set your stall out. And what I like to do is mask out any areas that you don't want cover covered in luster. So I've used insulation tape, which you can buy in hardware shops really cheap and this does save a lot of hard work I've forgotten exactly this is so if I was dipping um, a flat piece of work I've already covered the back with the insulation tape and then I make a handle and I just stick the tape down, cover that a bit because what you don't want to do is actually put your own hand in the, in the bucket and leave marks on your tile as well if you were trying to handle it. And it's always important to get all your preparation work done first before you actually add the lustres to the water. Because once the lustres are in the water, they have a tendency and want to migrate towards the sides of the bucket. So you want to get everything ready. What would happen if you stirred that up to get it out from the sides? It doesn't, it doesn't work, it sticks. It sticks, it sticks to plastic. Um, I've used a normal plastic bucket, but I've put a bin liner in there. Uh, two reasons for this. Um, a, I don't have to clean the bucket afterwards of all the lusters. Um, like I said, the luster are, um, migrates towards the edges. So when you come to pour that water down the drain, you're left with the lusters inside the bag. And then you can dispose of the bag. Um, carefully without then having to use say solvents to clean the luster off the bucket. If you dip in an object, there's only the the base that I don't want covered in luster. You don't need a handle because you can actually put your hand on there and dip it. So I've got all my pieces ready now. I've chosen four lusters. In the bucket I've placed my water ready and it's what you would call tepid water, it's just barely warm. <clears throat> I take a top of each of the lustres that I'm going to use. For this purpose it doesn't matter which colours I'm using. <clears throat> just choose colours that you like. I take cocktail sticks, a cocktail stick for each colour, but before I dip them into the lustres, I always wet them first. And this prevents the luster actually soaking into the cocktail stick. So I just get everything ready. And then I start. And all you need a couple of drops. Shake them. Go on to your next colour. As you can see it dissipates in the water and you can't really see these colours. Which is why it's good to be regimented with your bottles. And then what I do just before 
a dip. I'll just give them a bit of a swirl because some of them will want to just stay in drops. And I'll take my object and I'll dip it. Place it on some newspaper. These results, the results you'll get from there are totally unpredictable. You'll never really know what you've got. If the pieces are starting to look a bit sparse and you are dipping several objects, you can always just add a few more. And even if you're unhappy with the piece, which I don't think that looks particularly good, you can re-dip. One more time. Some of these lusters, they will look naked, um, naked to the eye at this stage, but after firing, it's surprising how some of the colours come up. This tile didn't look particularly well covered when uh, before I fired it, and yet all these colours have appeared. When you said you'd use gold luster on this black tile, yes. Was that liquid bright gold you actually used? It was, because liquid bright gold is, is a luster. Yeah. So it behaves just the same. Um, this tile was achieved literally by just two drops in the same bucket of water, swirled around a bit and then quickly dipped. So it's a good way of getting a lot of mileage out of your gold. You can use coloured backgrounds, or you can use mother of pearl background, or you can just use your white china for dipping. If I'm doing something like this, I literally just put my hand in. few more in it doesn't look very good that one. Because all the time you're working the any lustres that you've got in your bucket they're starting to go towards the sides of the bucket. But you can see from this technique I'm not actually using very much material at all. So although they are expensive It's a fairly cheap method of achieving something different. That's a bit better. Now, how do you go on about that? Do you take it right up to the top or just like a quarter of an inch from the top? Well, I try and go as close as I can to the top. Yeah. But I don't obviously want it to, to go, go in there inside. because I'd have to clean that. And that's basically it. All I do then is once the lusters have tacked off a little bit, I'll just get a tissue and gently pat the water off. You can see no lusters have gone there. And then I can just remove my tape. And I'll put that in my tissue. Supposed to be a clean tile, obviously been used before. But you can see I've saved up a massive cleaning up job there. Actually, just put that down on
basically that's, that's it really. You would fire this normally at about 750, 760 degrees C centigrade. And then you could go on and do um, designs on top of it. Either gold underlay and then bright gold or black pen work. Um, it's a good choice that you could do. And that's all really.